Hi everyone, it's Madge, and this is Overhoard, at Overhoard on Instagram, which I always forget to say, and this is our, what I think might be our last episode of season one, we have a fantastic guest that my wonderful co-host, Fashion Sluri, is going to introduce, so please do the honors, Fashion Sluri. The winner of Fashion Sluri's <laughs> Drag Race is... Mama Queen! Hi, thanks for inviting me. So happy to be here. Well, thanks for thanks doing for this. Thanks for being here. Yeah. It is a of huge course, my honor. Pleasure. Huge honor. We're so excited <laughs> to have you here. We we have absolutely adored you, uh, your fashions, your art, your, mm -hmm. your personality, uh, your vision. And I think for myself, more than anyone on Drag Race, you exemplify why we do this show. Because... You have a, a something about you and your spirituality and your artistic vision that that changes people for the better. And yeah. I don't know, I don't know how to summarize it better than that. I think what you bring to Drag Race is why Drag Race exists. Um, anyway, <laughs> I think it's a yeah, great. I think, summary. I think that's a fair, fair point there, and it's also what I what I kept in mind when uh, preparing for Drag Race. So I'm really happy that you pointed out like that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you've just been so fantastic. And, you know, because I'm not a super fan. I was thinking about the other day because somebody posted Drag Race bingo cards, right? And it's all these things super fans do. you like, you know, what do you obsess on? You know the names of all the winners. You can recite all the first people. Get... I don't know any of that shit. I like doing this <laughs> show because I, I was, I'm interested in Dutch culture. I'm, I'm a, I guess, a Dutchophile. Fashion Slurry is my friend. She suggested it. I thought it was a fun way to get together. I do love Drag Race, too. But the thing mm -hmm. I love about Drag Race is what it does for the community because, like, I know where I'm from in Chicago, everybody gets together on Drag Race night and goes to the bar. COVID is an exception sometimes, but gets to the bar and we create the sense of community that the gay people have never had to, to sort of be together. And mm -hmm. and I th I just I don't know what else to say about that. What do you think, fashion? Well, yeah, I'm Dutch, so for <laughs> me, I just well, and I. I've watched every season of Drag Race as is. Well, the American, well, the English uh, spoken ones, I have to say. So <laughs> when uh, Dutch, uh, the Dutch version was announced, I harassed Madge to do it with me, to do a podcast. And that's why we're here. Yes. And uh, yeah, uh, for, for me, the fun part about it is not knowing anybody. And getting to know them, because that's how it works for me with uh, the U.S. version, the British version, and the Canadian version. Yeah. So I, I knew nobody, and I didn't want to look into anybody before we started, because I love getting to know uh, the people uh, j uh, contending uh, through the show. And right. it was amazing for me. So in your, in your first episode, you came on pregnant. And then later, when you were with your father, you were pregnant again, and your father was pregnant. So can you explain to us why, why the pregnancy? That's obviously something key to your, to your drag or to, to your art. I yeah, it's not, it's not only for my drag. It's interesting, uh -huh. and I'm really happy that you ask about it, because um, pregnancy is something that fascinated me since... It's one of my earliest memories that I was fascinated by pregnant women and the belly, and that there was a baby inside, and I was like, oh, this is something magical and um i wanted to be a mom since i was young so it was like uh, what do you want to be when you grow up i always said i want to be a mom or a fashion designer and um people told me when i was really young that i could never be a mom i could only be a dad and i just re rejected that idea and for me it's not only in drag it's also personal i would love to be pregnant one day and and carry a baby in my belly and i i feel like a lot of people think it's impossible but i just don't want to limit my mind into thinking something is impossible so i'm just this is like an off track besides the entertainment and the drag uh mama queen there's also me dennis that would, would like to be pregnant one day so that's why i entered pregnant and of course there's also a drag baby uh in my in my belly at the moment so she's not born yet for the public but she's already in the house so she's let's say in the womb nurturing her drag until she's ready to be born so she's it's also that's why i was pregnant to symbolize that so this person that this drag persona in your belly is that a literal person somebody you're working with yes. or it is okay yes it's it's a it's a 
a person, a human being who's starting to do drag and uh, not sure yet what form or shape it's going to be. So it's really... So is that your sixth uh, kid? Drag five. So, oh, it's yeah, your fifth. Six, five. I have five kids, but six is like... I have six kids, but five publicly known and one yeah, in the, the band. One, yeah. okay. That's fascinating yes. because so that was my other grown. question is I was going to ask you, what, what did you want to be when you were a, a child? Because like Janie always wanted to be a drag queen. But like Envy Peru, she wanted to be an actor. So you've already answered the question. So you wanted to be a mother and a drag queen, right? Is that what you said? A uh, fashion designer. Fashion designer. I'm sorry. Yes, oh. I started out as a, as a fashion designer. I did my education, my profession in fashion design. I switched from fashion more to the entertainment industry. So I designed costumes for different people in entertainment. I joined the circus for a while. I, oh so I, I did many different creative uh, stage uh what did Art? you do in the circus? What was that about? Aerial silk oh, and uh, ground acrobatics. It was a circus oh, theater. So it was people from like 16 or 18 till 21, 22, 23. And we just created plays together, uh, storylines, and then we acted them in an artistic circus way. So we just went on the streets to different places and we performed our shows. Oh my god. Was it part of uh what what's it called again? Uh it travels through I don't know if it still travels through the Netherlands. Uh Cirque du Soleil? No. Oh no, yeah. you mean uh Parade. Oh yeah, the par- yeah. No, it, it wasn't, wasn't part, part of, of the Parade. It was like a uh one of my I come from a small town in a near the German border and there was a circus there and mm. the daughter of the circus wanted to start her own group with people her own age and I joined that new group. It was called Dynamic Dreams. And yeah, we just started from a different background. So I was a dancer. There were some people who have acrobatic backgrounds. Some people have uh, backgrounds with fire or different acrobatic circus elements. And then we just got together and created shows and okay. sold to the shows to audiences. Yeah. That's and you did all the costumes then? or I did the costumes, yes. Yes. So you you've got a head start. You could do the work the world tour and do the because I've seen those documentaries about the work the world tour and they do a lot of um, sort of I guess aerial acrobatics. I know mm-hmm. I forget her name. Uh, God, I'm terrible. The one that won Violet Chachki. Violet Chachki. Yeah. Can you do that sort of thing? Can you? Yes. Do that? Really? Yeah. That's fascinating. God, yeah. you too. Well, I have to. It. I have to say, I haven't tried aerial uh. silks being tucked in a corset. <laughs> so, I mean. I have to see about that. And it's been a while, but I would love to uh, incorporate that in my in my drag, especially if we can go on tour and have bigger yeah. theaters. Because, I mean, it's nice if you can do it, but if you're in a bar in Amsterdam and you say, well, I do aerials and I want to come from the ceiling, they say, well, honey, if you raise your hand, you can already touch the ceiling. So it's not going to happen. But especially you. I'm super Wait. tall. So How tall are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm two meters almost without heels. Okay. Wow. That means yeah. I have to translate it because I'm... An idiot and we don't we we never transferred to the 64 wow i think that tall that is tall i I'm think it's 60, five, i'm not really sure i'm not really sure if that's the right thing it's like 100 and that's fine 69 centimeters so, 96 96 wow so yeah. you um <laughs> you studied fashion did you also study art because you're highly conceptual in your in your fashion uh, i studied fashion as a um in a Two practical educations. So one was more about designing and one was more about pattern making and craftsmanship. And then I uh, continued my education on the Art Academy in Rotterdam, Willem de Koning. Yeah. And yes. And there I studied fashion, but in my, uh, my last two years, I focused on art performance and I wanted to incorporate drag in, uh, in art school, which was a challenge because it wasn't really recognized as a true art form but only seen as an entertainment uh, uh, expression. Um, but through art school, I learned how to conceptualize and to, to make my looks stronger. And um, it's also really nice if you have a concept that if somebody else doesn't really like your look, then it's like, yeah, you don't like it, but I know it's good because it's conceptually well thought <laughs> out. And so, yeah. That's so really drilled nice to into you. Behind my look. Yeah. Yeah, it's really drilled into you on the Art Academy. Uh, th- yes. th- you have to have a great concept. If you say, I did it because I like it, you'll 
get yeah shit slap in the face. That's yes. so interesting because I was I was just thinking about the other day about how you and Chelsea Boy in particular have really that it's not really just the two of you. I just feel like especially this last uh, Drag Race Holland has Patty really elevated drag and Patty has really e- elevated the whole idea of drag that it's not just performance anymore. It really is art in itself Mm -hmm. because you're not, it's, it's, you're not just compartmentalizing the fashion and saying that's artistic or the performance. Mm -hmm. It's the whole being of the, of the drag queen that has become a Mm -hmm. piece of art and something that's something new. I can't define it. It's you can't just call it performance or, you know, it's something new. And I think, yeah, I think I'm it's also to... because yeah. there's also a focus on uh, on individual identity lately. I think uh, socially uh, in in every society now, also with the social media, and everybody wants to um, to have this individual identity, and that's why it's so important to know what's behind the queen. So we really want to know the person and the motivation and the story. I think in in drag race in general, if you see the American uh, seasons. Uh, in the beginning, it was more entertainment, but in the end, it's really about the culture, about the sisterhood, mm-hmm. about uh, the the background of every queen, where you come from, where you want to go, what your future perspective is. And I think it's really interesting to show that we are more than just a, uh, decorative uh, personalities. Yeah, I think yeah. you're touching on something, because not just in drag, but in, well, like you kind of already said, in the whole world, uh, everything is about storytelling. So it, it you have to have a beginning, a middle, and an end to uh, well develop a character or develop an idea or whatever. So yeah, that's an interesting uh, something I mean, you noticed. I, I, <laughs> I, I didn't. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, fine. I know nothing about fashion. Fashion slurry obviously does, and I know nothing, which I think was part of why we go well together. But every time you came on the stage, you blew me away. Like especially that first time when you did the uh, the Mother Mary. Or, Whatever her name is, I'm Jewish. Yeah. Mary, uh, Queen of Sc- whatever her name, what yeah. Jesus' <laughs> mother, <laughs> Mary. Yeah. Mary. That's just Mary. And I was just blown away. And I didn't even care that your crown fell off. I'm like watching that. I'm like, oh my god, she has to win. I, I was telling my partner, like, she has to win because that was so fucking amazing. I don't care if her crown fell off, and they should have edited it out, but they didn't. Thank so, you. I mean, Thank it's you. just no. you absolutely stunned me. And especially at the end when you did the uh, the that uh, colorful, I don't know what you call it, peacock on LSD. I mean, oh, it just takes last, my breath uh, away. Yeah. It's Thank just, you. And I don't know anything about fashion, but I know my reaction as a human yeah. being when I see something and it makes me drop. That's hard to, that's hard to accomplish um, yes. in, a, in a very... <laughs> well, it's always, I think it's also a compliment when the, when the judges told me in the final episode, like, I don't know if I particularly like it, but yeah. it doesn't really matter anymore because right. it's, not about, it's not about if they like it or not. It's about what I express. And I, yeah. I always said also in art school like if my my teachers or the people who had to um to grade my work mm-hmm. didn't understand it i was like but if you don't understand it maybe my work is just not meant for you to be seen exactly <laughs> because well, was, the people yeah. that see me that that you know i know that there's a lot of people that look at me and find answers instead of questions you know and that's mm-hmm. what it's about for me like i want to be representation for people who are identifying like me and who are at home and thinking oh i wish i could be that person and but the real the yeah. real rule breakers and bigger than current life whatevers they always have uh something people really react to they either like it or they don't Mm -hmm. and i think that's Mm -hmm. uh well testament to what you're doing and uh i think yeah well Um, who who was it we were talking to fashion slurry i think it was chelsea boy who dropped out of art school because basically they didn't understand what what he was doing it was right I think it was Chelsea. Yeah. yeah, and it was like, and and my reaction was, if the if if the teachers don't don't understand mm-hmm. what you're doing, you're doing it right, you know. That's yes. Because you know, I went to business school, yes, which is yes. totally different. But I'd go to business school and I would say, hey, you guys, why are you teaching kids or you know students to alienate people in business? You know, I I was challenging it, and I think that's what education is about: is you have mm-hmm. to challenge the teachers. Definitely. That's yeah. just how it works. Um. So. Oh, gosh, this is just so interesting to me. I was so moved by a lot of things you did, but in particular, um, when you t- looked at yourself as a child and mm-hmm. the picture looked like in in some ways you were effeminate. And then you said something like, and I, my memory is terrible. You said something like that, that 
person inside you is not a girl. It's just you, right? Am I saying that right? Like you were just saying that this mm-hmm. is just you. Yes. It's not a boy. It's not a girl. It's not necessarily anything defined. It's just you. So mm-hmm. can you maybe elaborate on that? Because yeah. your, your sense of right. gender identity is fascinating, and I'd like to understand it better. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's uh, again, thank you for asking this, because for me, this is really something I want to be vocal about. Um, when I was a, a kid, I had a lot of interest in everything for girls. And I thought I wanted to be a girl for quite some time. And I discussed with my parents if I wanted to start with the puberty uh, stoppers and take hormones and change my name. And um, actually, the changing my name was the point where I felt uncomfortable. And I was like, no, I don't want to put anything in my body and I don't want to change my name. I just want to be able to do what I feel like I want to do. So I want to go to ballet classes, have nail paint and... uh, have long hair and but everything that had to do with changing my body and preparing my body for like a grown-up state of being uh felt really uncomfortable for me so at that time i decided not to um transform or transition or however you want to call it um but uh, a year ago i decided that i do want to start with hormones and want to feminize my uh, physical body and of course, because I have the, the dream one day to become pregnant, the whole gender um, binary system for me is really problematic and confusing at times because I feel like there's such a limit put on people all around me and everybody thinks that I'm the one being stuck um, figuring out who I yeah. am or what I am. Well, I, I actually feel like I'm the one being free while well, everybody around me is being present and i'm just happy that through drag race i meet so many people that are free like me you know and yeah that's also what you said in the finally right. uh, fi- finale <laughs> yeah in your podcast. and, and that, that really resonated with me because uh sometimes i i am one who is looking for myself constantly and that might have to do with uh some trauma in the past but we won't get into that but uh when you said that it really resonated with me and i thought yes that's that's what i that's what i want to be what what i want to be when i grow up (laughs) it was so profound to say that it was so profound to say you know maybe it's not you like we're as gay lesbian whatever we are we whatever however we identify we are always i i should speak for myself but like i was always taught to believe that i'm wrong you know and what you're mm. saying is, no, you're not wrong. You're who you are. Maybe everybody else is wrong when when it comes to judging your yes. identity. You're you're just who you are. And you, to me, you take mm. this whole idea of gender identity a step further because yeah. everybody's lately is talking about how you identify. Are you non-binary? Are you binary? And I've talked to other people on my show about that too. And like, it seems to be coming to the conclusion that those labels are just kind of unnecessary and that maybe someday mm-hmm. we'll get to the point where we don't need to define ourselves yeah. in any way. I mean, why do we need to, why do we need to say we're male, female, gender, this gender, that, I mean, obviously there's certain biological differences, but why do we need to define ourselves by them? I, I'm just not sure. And I love the way that you're bringing those questions up. And you mentioned in an interview, I think with Valerie about how you yeah. st- learned a lot about this in your gender studies class in college. I, uh, since I was young, my, the way I expressed myself visually always raised questions in other people's minds. So I always had to answer those questions, but I didn't have the words to answer it because I didn't know, because I was like, Mm. people always ask me like, so, um, you look really feminine. Do you want to be a girl? And I was like, um, yes, no, I don't, mm, I I just, I just want to be me the way I Mm. am. That's why I, I dress like the way I do. And I still have that feeling, but for me, it's now more interesting to analyze the questions that people have instead of the answers that I give. So at some points I'm like, does it really matter? Why does it matter if I identify more as male or female Mm -hmm. or masculine or feminine? What is it? How how do you, let's say if I go for a job interview and I hand my CV and it says Dennis, then people expect that there's a, a boy or a guy walking in. And then if I walk in with my leopard dress, my nails painted and everything, they are confused. Uh, Confusions 
uh, is what int intrigued me because I feel people treat you differently based on your gender. Mm, and oh, that's for me is something I, I feel like I don't do. So for me, it's like, I don't care if you're a man or a woman or uh, how you identify or what you've been assigned at, at birth or what genitalia you have. If I'm, let's say, if I'm connecting with people, if I want to be your friend, then it's about uh, your values, your norms mm -hmm. and what, what, how, do you, oh. how you treat people or experiences. And I'm like, I, I really, I don't define people with their background or what they've done when they were young or... You know, I, I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has their own journey. And I just, I feel everybody is a book. And I just don't want to judge it by the cover, even though sometimes, of course, you are attracted to visual uh, appearance. But I try not to judge it. Yeah, like that. So interesting. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. It does. Well, I, it I, does to me. <laughs> yeah, you're just, you're really an incredible teacher. And I think that's been your role as much as being an artist on drag races, just being able to, to teach people and to, um, to help people evolve. And certainly when you had your father on, I think that helped so many people because you gave permission to fathers to dress in oh, drag yeah. and to yeah. accept their gay kids. Yeah. That was so big. Everybody who watched that show was in tears and I yes. am a hardcore mm -hmm. diesel, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I don't cry. Fashion slurry doesn't cry. We're both crying. Right. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. it, it was so moving. It was so transcendent. And I said, this is why I do this. This is why I watch this show. This is why I'm a fan. And I, it's just wonderful. And you have that yeah. in, in common with RuPaul because RuPaul has had, I, I make fun of her a lot of, for, for fracking and all this nonsense, but she has this perception of the world around her, which I think you share in a way. And what, what makes her so successful, I think, is that she's, she's, done a lot of consciousness expansion and she just sees the mm -hmm. world as sort of this vision, you know, reality simulation. I think you have a similar mm -hmm. concept. You step way the fuck back and you look at the world in a totally different yeah. way. And I think yes. that's what you're bringing to us. And I'm just so fascinated by it. Yeah. And now that we mentioned the dad, mm -hmm. my God, I want to praise him. And I did on, on our uh, Instagram and stuff, but my God, he walks in heels that, Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people can walk in. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I was so fucking impressed. I was really impressed. Well, I was impressed too because I have to I have to tell you, my dad, he I I've never seen him without a beard. He never walked on heels, <laughs> never wear a dress, makeup, nothing. I mean my my dad, of course, uh I'm super grateful he was on the show and he supported me like that. But my dad is not uh, the typical dad that is with every show on the first uh first row supporting me you know he's not always there seeing yeah. every show following me everywhere because we live totally different lives i mean my dad mm -hmm. is really uh uh let's say uh he works a nine to five job five days a week and he has some some hobbies in the weekend he does something uh, a lot of things for the community together with my mom um but they don't see me in every show if i have big shows but you do have that in common though you're you're say, you sh said he does a lot of for the community it might be a different way, but that's what you do. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. True. And my dad, my dad have. It's just we have we have different communities. Yeah. Let's put it like that. So yeah. my dad is really active in his community, and I'm mm -hmm. active in my community. And um, I when I uh, my dad came to the show, I just told him, imagine I was your son, and I could do something else really well, like play football, and they could ask the dads to join for one day. This is just the same, only we're doing drag. You can make a mistake. The fact that you're here is already the only thing that matters and we mm. just have to have fun. And there was, for me, it was not, we couldn't go wrong because my dad being there was the right thing to do. So I really didn't have any stress. It was really nice to have my dad there. And it's not that many times that my dad and me are doing things together. So usually it's me and my sister or me and my mom or the whole family, but not me and my dad together as, as the two of us. So doing something with my dad on that stage, being on performing, and actually I thought my dad really, he, I, I couldn't expect this, you know? I was yeah. like, you're a performer. You're like really, you're yes. actually really good. I see myself yes. in you. Like he was holding the bad lead. He, the way yes. he walked, I was like, I'm super <laughs> happy with that experience. It's the best day of my life. 
it was I think you're right that's part of it is part of it he was just such a good performer I mean you could you could feel his emotion in in his in his presentation I mm-hmm. mean he was just so you you could get a feel for his personality and his humanity and you could just mm-hmm. tell this is a wonderful yeah. human being it was it was yes. just such an incredible moment and I and did you know in advance it would be him or they they ask you to make two selections is that how it works how how did that happen uh, everybody would expect me to take my mom and mm. my mom would love to do it because she always supported me uh, with buying buying heels and uh, she was also into making clothing and well emotionally I have like a good talkative connection with my mom but then of course being conscious of the fact that everybody in our scene basically has daddy issues I thought <laughs> this is the perfect moment for mm. my dad to show his uh, unlimited support and of course, he was a little bit uh, uncomfortable because, to be honest, he didn't see one single individual episode before I asked him. And um, when he said, yes, I want to do it, I told him, like, if you want it, you can watch the show. But if you don't want it, then just come and have two fun days and you don't have to prepare anything. So I think my dad just maybe Googled RuPaul huh. and checked a little bit. But <laughs> he was before he entered the show, he was clueless. And I told my dad we, when we uh, came up the runway... I told him that he always sees me as somebody special, but I said, there's 10 queens in this workroom or they started 10 queens and there's only one dad. So you are the true special uh, person in this, in this room. So it's, yeah. Well, I really, it's really a unique uh, historical moment to have a dad on Drag Race. I really loved when, um, when, you know, they asked him to say, well, what, why should mama queen win? And he listed his things, you know, he he surprised me when he said because she makes her own clothes because that's like <laughs> yeah. a real competitive thing that's like I want my kid to win you know I expect yeah. stuff like well Mama's so and such a good person and all this and she's a good performer but like he really was like he was real it's like he knew what's going on mm-hmm. you know he knew what the show's about when he said because that's that was one of your biggest advantages so you make your own stuff yes. he's like this is I want my kid to win this <laughs> yes uh, what I also yeah. was, thought was really beautiful about your dad being there is how uh um Janie Jacke uh, J- oh, I keep Janie Jacke yes <laughs> Janie Jacke <laughs> yeah I'm such an asshole anyway no uh uh how she opened up about or uh, yeah she opened up You're for the fun. viewer maybe for the first time and that was yes. really really yeah. profound with your dad and uh well, her telling about the bond with her da- dad and whatever. It was so beautiful. The whole well, I have episode. I have to say that this is partly editing because for me, um, uh, I was really close. I didn't know uh, Janie J.K. before the show, only by name. So we never met. And uh, I, I really connected with her from day one. And of course, I already knew my dad was going to come. So I, I was screaming from the first episode like i need to make it to episode six because my dad is going to be here it's going to be amazing it has to happen and of course we talked about it before and i knew it was going to be an emotional episode because of uh of janie's dad passing only three years ago and uh, we we talked a lot about the the experience that she had uh before around uh passing of her dad and we, we already discussed like, oh, if your mom is going to come and my dad is going to come, we really have to connect them. Maybe they're going to be just as great friends as we are. And then when they arrived in the studio, they already clicked. Oh. So they were already like fans, uh, friends together. And it's, we have the same connection. So me and Jamie and my dad and her mom have the same vibes. So that was really amazing. Yeah, Janie's great. Yeah. We had her on last week and, and she was just phenomenal, just so intelligent and, and yes. wonderful to talk to. And, you know, sometimes they have storylines they want you to get across. But I think it was easy to see through that and then figure out what what how wonderful Janie is as a person. Yeah. Um, yes, she's so, really wonderful. Yes. So about your your fashion, um, I know you're a big fan of Alexander McQueen, obviously. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yes. So, yes. <laughs> so oh. who else who else inspires you? artistically and i mean in terms of fashion and maybe in terms of art in general as well if you have favorite artists and then uh well i was always uh mesmerized by uh by dali mm. mm-hmm. and also because uh, i i've seen some pictures of uh when dali still gave parties oh. and <laughs> everybody was dressed in amazing costumes and these oh. parties uh yes. 
well, I, I wish I could live in, in that time and, uh, and just put a birdcage on my head or big antlers. Have you ever been to Florida? And have you ever seen the private collection of Dali there? No, I haven't. Wait, what? I've never been to the States. Wait, I don't know uh, about this and I'm in Florida you need right to now. Go to Sa- you need to go to St. Pete's and there is the Dali Muse- Museum and they have a private collection, the biggest private collection worldwide of Dali uh, stuff. <gasps> And I had no amazing. idea. I've been to Why Spain and I went to his house, but I didn't know there was oh, one right here. I haven't seen here. that yet. <laughs> <Forget> <laughs> it. Oh. Which is kind of weird, but yeah. Oh, how but funny. If you uh, see uh, Dali and uh, McQueen are kind of total opposites to me because I love McQueen because it's so structured and so stunningly perfect and Dali is way more um, flamboyant and different how, how do you true I, I love yeah, both I, by the I way I think it's so. not, not necessarily about about what they express I mean of course I love their visuals but it's also about the personality a, bit, mm-hmm. a little bit about the mindset about how they create their own world mm-hmm. uh, what I do think you think about that. Vivian Westwood because I love oh, amazing her. Oh. Amazing, yes, amazing. Yeah. I've been I've I've been to London for for quite some time to to model, and I saw her uh, her atelier from oh. Uh, the. Oh my god! I'm I'm having an orgasm here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. you saw her working? That's what I got from the last sentence, well, right? No, I didn't saw her oh. working, oh. but I saw her studio with people oh. in it oh. i didn't see her but oh. yeah <laughs> oh my yeah. god oh yeah you know you talk I actually about have one piece one piece of vivian westwood clothing in my uh in my uh i've got shoes <laughs> oh nice but but i'm a shoe addict that, um, most of all i'm a fashion addict but shoes oh my god yeah i love yeah. shoes too but i have really big feet so <laughs> me too but for a woman so <laughs> yeah me too for a woman <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay, I'm guessing you're a 46. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's hard. To, that's hard to do though to get heels in those sizes because I'm a 41. Yes. So for Dutch standards, it's not that bad. But I worked in a shoe store as well. It's and I was lucky that I worked there because I was always the one to have first pick for the 41s. Yeah. But they're gone really quick. But how yes. do you get your shoes? Do you get them made? Or- um, uh, I order them. Uh, or okay. some uh, in Italy, there's some uh, vegan shoe oh, mm-hmm. uh, brand. It's called uh, Shubidu, mm-hmm. and they have really amazing shoes. And also in Rotterdam, there's a shoe store. And um, yeah, I know that store. Yeah. Also secondhand. Sometimes I'm lucky. Mm-hmm. Here in Chicago, we go to there. It's not too hard to get shoes for drag queens. We just there's a store called Skyscraper Heels. And they sell shoes for drag queens and strippers. I don't know why strippers have big feet too, but uh, <laughs> that's where we go. Yeah, I always jokingly say when I donate my shoes that I'm gonna make some drag queen really happy with <laughs> my shoes because for well, for Dutch standards, like I said, not that big, but for other countries, it's pretty much a male size. What yeah. I have, so yeah. When I need shoes, if I need like high heels for ladies. I go downtown to the Payless because that's where all the big ladies <laughs> shop, and they always have the. I've been sizes. to that Payless. <laughs> have you? <laughs> yeah, you took me there. Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember my life. I forgot my whole life. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about wishing you lived in Dali's time and his amazing mm. parties. Mm-hmm. What my, what comes to mind when you talk about that is you could throw those parties too, right? Yeah. Not at the moment. Oh, that's true. yeah. Okay, not at <laughs> no. the moment. But it's also it's also different because I think the mindset now is different. Yeah, mm. and because people have phones and social media, and they're yeah. super conscious of themselves the whole time. I mean, mm-hmm. if you just look good, you look in the mirror, and you go to the party, and you don't have a phone yeah. anymore, then it's a different vibe. Then, oh. yeah, if the See, I would love not phone that anymore. Yeah. Right. I'm old, and we talked about Jane, with Janie with us last week because she's fascinated with like '90s Amsterdam culture. And I was in, I was living in um, the Netherlands in the '90s, so I used to go to the It and the Roxy, and I was. We were talking about those huge parties they used to have, and the drag queens ran the show, and they would just throw these fantastic coordinated parties uh, with, yes. with these themes that were absolutely phenomenal. I just, 
I don't see why you can't uh, bring that back. Obviously, after COVID, but mm-hmm. and and you should just tell no, people, course, you know I mean, what, I'm planning leave, it. huh? I'm I'm planning with my house to throw parties. We've been trying this for for quite some time, but it's it's just I'll different. I'll be there. Yes, yes, be there. It's <laughs> going to be amazing. We we also wanted to do themes and uh, uh, make it really like a special experience, but. It's difficult with so many, uh, especially media. in a big city. If, yeah. Mm. I get that. Maybe you could do something really fascist and just tell them to leave their phones yes. at the door. You know, oh, just like I check the phone. Because yeah. I'm so sick of that shit. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Instagram, it just makes me crazy because mm-hmm. it's like when I scroll through my Instagram, all I see are these hot people with perfect abs that look like nobody I ever see on the street. And it's all thirst traps. I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't, I just, it, that just confuses me. I don't want to be horny all the time, you know? <laughs> I don't want to be horny yes. from my phone. Stop it. <laughs> but I can't stop well, looking at it. Well, that's also your algorithm, honey. That's also your algorithm. Oh, so you oops. You get what you want, honey. You get what you want. <laughs> Maybe I do want to be horny from my phone then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you see? When you look at your phone, do you see pregnant well, women? I will tell you, I've, I've had this for some time that I was I was following all this hot man and I just saw hot man all the time when I scrolled down my Instagram. But at some point I was like, no, I just want to be inspired and not horny. And I mm-hmm. deleted all these accounts and I'm, I'm, I do plan to... Uh, be on social media and do some like mama's candy or mama's i don't know something um, but i am not like on social media anymore to look for something that i will never have let's okay. say so now <laughs> i i feel like i've given out way too much information about myself I don't that. no honey Oops. Oops. never just be free be free it doesn't matter i want it but i don't want it it's just weird it's, <laughs> this whole state hate sort of torture yeah hmm. yeah but you know, everybody has this have you ever seen a movie called uh, The Rabbit Test? You, it, it's an obscure movie starring Joan Rivers, and it was about a man who gets pregnant. And that keeps coming to mind when you're talking about it. Wow. Yeah. It's what is the it ra- called? I think it's called The Rabbit Test. God, the I Rabbit mean, Test. Oh, the Rabbit Test with Joan Rivers. It might not be the exact name, but it was something about a rabbit. It was about a man oh, who gets pregnant. I love that you want to get pregnant. Maybe it is possible. You just don't know. It probably it is, is possible. It is possible. I, I did my research. Yeah. and Really? When they started IVF treatment in the 70s, they tested it on men. So they thought if we can give a man a hormonal uh, state uh, where a woman should be in in order to get pregnant, and they tested abdominal pregnancies in men. Hmm. Uh-huh. And there is also artificial uh, wombs now, so... Yes. Yeah, but I exactly. think Mama wants it to be inside her. Yeah, I want it to be inside but if myself. There's an artificial, yes. yeah, of course. But if there's an artificial womb, why couldn't it be inside a human? That right. was more my thought. Exactly. That's also what... I, and I feel like that the more I focus on it, the more I express myself. And also when I made the belly and, and arrived at a gig for the first time pregnant, I was like, oh, Mama Queen. And you're pregnant. Oh, my God. So on brand. I was like, yes. <laughs> so then, that's so, why I decided. It's so to funny do it again. that we have so much in common, but that's the one thing we absolutely do not have in common. But you I could get pregnant, but I don't want to get pregnant. Well, maybe you can give then, mama your uterus. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. But it's it's but for me, a lot of people because I like kids that's and I like playing with kids, but I'm one with a kid state of mind i like to do uh, uh creative stuff with kids and be wacky and whatever but i just don't want kids myself but yeah. i've been harassed so many times well now that i'm older nobody asks me anymore but when i was in my 20s it was always like oh when are you gonna get kids I, uh, it was always a difficult thing to right. talk yeah. about yes so, i understand yes so your house is called the house of holographic hosts why holographic i like yes. it Holographic, because holographic is different from every angle, and it's all about how the light hits it. Uh-huh. Oh. And I think as a house, we I want to be inclusive and diverse and have a, everybody to express themselves fully and not copy what I do. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just really want to have strength in, uh, in uniqueness. So yes. that's for me, the holographic, we can be transforming from, let's say... Uh, Fashion queens to party queens to to evil queens, uh, and I, I like that. Queen, it's really yeah. it's really conceptual. Yeah, with with one of my daughters, I went to festivals and we were on a stage with uh, spray paint spraying each other's bodies. We went to oh. do performances in a museum where we 
uh, entered as, as audience. And halfway through, we just decided to take our clothes off and start doing makeup and transform into drag queens. And everybody was like, what? Oh, what are these guys amazing. doing? Like, you know, so was I like to... Was it the kunsthal to... toevallig? Sorry? Was it the kunsthal toevallig? Oh, no, it was not the kunsthal. It was at a festival in Amsterdam. I'm not sure oh. what the name was. But the kunsthal was... would I, be I... Uh, such a place to do that too. I think. Yes, true. You're right. Yes, really, I like yeah. to think, I like to do that. And, and, and let's say question, question when, what is the stage... When is it my stage? I mean, if the, for me, mm-hmm. the world is my stage and the world yeah. is my mm-hmm. runway. And yeah. I express everywhere. So it's, I don't know, sometimes people give me a stage, like a real stage, but sometimes I take the world as my stage as well. Yeah. That's great. It, it, when you when I hear holographic, I always think of uh, like uh, Cubism, Picasso, you know, it makes me think of oh, like yeah. showing different things in, in time at the same time. And mm-hmm. in some ways you seem, you seem to do that, especially thinking about your uh, split personality costume. Which was mm-hmm. so oh, amazing, that was so good, and that whole situation. I think everybody learned from that because it's easy to come down hard on the judges as, as mm-hmm. they did it initially. But that was such a teaching moment. Like, what mm-hmm. what do you take away from that? Do you have any regrets about that? Do you th- feel like you followed the instructions, or would you have done it differently? Or do you think that mm-hmm. this misjudged you? And how do you how do you process all that? I think, in a way, I've always been intrigued by subversive art and art that's not being understood in the moment, but maybe in ten years or fifteen years. Or mm-hmm. I feel like I don't want to. Uh, that also what I said in the in to my to my uh, past self. Like I'm not here to to join what's already here, but I'm mm-hmm. here to create something what needs to become. You know, and mm-hmm. um, especially with that half 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 man half women, I was already. I was like, I know this is going to be in an issue let's say i already felt it in the beginning but still i have to be true to who i am and of course i didn't know if the judges would understand it and praise it or let's say uh don't like it but um i don't i don't have any regrets if it comes to that i prepared really well and i loved all my looks i mean i was the least favorite was my my red white and blue uh ball because i just (laughs) thought uh, the topic was really boring but um (laughs) Other than that, I loved all my concepts, and especially this one, because I showed two of my mm-hmm. alter egos, not only Mama Queen, but also Lucifer, which is an, an, an actual, real uh, alter ego part of me. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. And I think everybody that knows me is like, yes, this is really you. And that the judges didn't get it. I mean, this is part of my daily life to explain how I identify and who I am. And uh, yeah. I mean, of course, I didn't. I, I was surprised on that stage, and I was emotional because, of course, the whole competition is already quite emotional. And mm-hmm. I knew that the episode uh, after was going to be with my dad, and I was like, "No, please <laughs> let let but, it not be the ignorance of the judges that's going to yeah. send me home." You know, because yeah. but, I mean, I, I, yeah, that was you, what annoyed me most about that episode because the. If they don't get it at first, I, I understand. Uh, maybe it's not for everybody. Not everybody is that woke or whatever you want to call it. But when you explained it and then they still kind of double down on, well, but that's right. not what we asked. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, wh- how can you respond like that when you just got an explanation to the why? Plus, for uh, as a viewer, the first time it was announced, it was two-faced. And on the mm-hmm. runway, uh, RuPaul said uh, "man, woman," mm-hmm. so it was a, a little confusing, right. uh, confusing as is. But yeah, yeah. but you say you well. Say, I will, I will, I will yeah. say it like this: that that is not, um, of course, production um, felt the critiques from from everybody, and we had some uh, some really uh, good talks about it and how to prevent things uh, happening again in the future if they're will be a second season and we also said as queens that we are more than happy to uh help and provide knowledge for behind the scenes and to make everything better and um i mean it's a learning process for everybody Mm -hmm. this is the first season and i think the production did an amazing job and of course there are some points of critique from the queens and also from audience and i think they will (laughs) yeah I, I, I mean, agree. it's the I first season, so I, I really think that there's a lot of uh, potential for, yeah. for mm-hmm. this program to, to develop and grow. And I think we really made an impact, especially when, uh, when the family members came. And mm-hmm. also, I mean, in the beginning, of course, it's, it's with every season, the first few queens, you're like a little bit overwhelmed when you have so many queens and so many names and so many attitudes. And after like the fourth 
fifth episode, you really get to know everybody and there's mm-hmm. a little bit more airtime for everybody. You get to know the stories. And then I think that's where uh, also the Queens kind of said in the first few uh, days of recording, yeah, we just have a little chit chat and it's a little bit superficial. And then, mm. okay, let's turn it around and have more interesting conversations in a workroom and have a little but, bit more influence in what's the, what's going to be on the, on the show. But it's also natural in real life too when you first meet you start superficial yes and then when you bit, find yeah. uh, uh what is it a familiar ground no uh equal ground yeah. whatever then then you start to go deeper into certain parts so it's i think a logical uh evolvement in the show anyway I'm, yeah i'm so. curious about one thing you said you have an alter ego a lucifer so yes how where is that? Because I don't see a I don't see no. a devilish side <laughs> to you. What, what can you explain that? Yes, well, it's it's not. Um, let's say it's not really an alter ego that is uh, expressed on a stage a lot. Mm-hmm. But it's for me, it's a part of me that I for a long time didn't acknowledge, and I always let's say people say I'm a nice person, I'm a kind person. I I take that as a compliment. But of course, I'm not always nice and I'm mm-hmm. not always kind. And sometimes I'm frustrated or angry ah. or mm. upset. And I denied all those feelings because I wanted to be happy and good and kind all the time. And then at some point, um, you can't and then you snap. And because that <laughs> yeah. happened a lot, I was like, I need to acknowledge this, my yeah. anger, my frustrations uh, before I snap, because otherwise people are like, what the fuck is happening with Mama Queen? And then I was like, no, there's Lucifer. And if people know that I have this alter ego and sometimes she's a bitch, I always say that she's like a mafia mom, but protecting her kids. Because uh, I think <laughs> you know, I saw a bit like of Lucifer my... maybe when you were uh, when you were frustrated with Madame Madness and you said, it's time for her to go. Was that Lucifer? Uh, no, no, it's not Lucifer. No, Lucifer, <laughs> let's say Lucifer is for me, let's say the the protector of Mama Queen. Uh, so when Mama Queen is like mm. in the public eye, she's the public person, she wants to help the world and save the children. And then there's Lucifer who's like, hold up, Mama, now you need to say no. And you, mm. Mama Queen thinks saying no is a, not a nice thing to do. Mm-hmm. But Lucifer is saying, Mama, you have to say no now and take care of yourself. And it's, it's an internal dialogue, of course, between like, yeah. okay, am I going to do this for free interview? Uh, because I want to help the students, but I'm fucking busy. And then Lucifer is saying, "Ah, oh, oh, Mama, chill a little bit. I'm not going to do this now." You <laughs> know, so, so it's really for me like the, yeah, it's I not really a demon, but I say dance with the devil <laughs> because it's like if you don't listen to the devil, then mm-hmm. it's going to be a surprise. Well, yeah. I'm but so impressed it, by your then... ability to see yourself from the outside. I mean, yes. I I don't do that. I'm just one person. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't see all those different personalities in me. I don't have that ability to step back and say, oh, here's Madge from far away. You know, I, it's fascinating to me that you can Oh, do that. I have more characters. I also have Carmen, and Carmen is uh, when I fuck everything up. I have those clumsy <laughs> days, you know, and it's just Carmen. And when I have those days that I want to be lazy and lay in bed and uh, watch stupid YouTube videos all day, then there's different characters for everything for me because wow. it's nice to acknowledge those parts of yourself but not as a whole you know if you're one day lazy it doesn't mean it it defines you as a lazy person you just have a lazy day and i just give that character a day yeah yeah i see those states of i see them as states of mind in myself Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i don't label them necessarily but yeah i can definitely uh get what you're saying yeah i think it's it's for uh, if you talk to chelsea boy about it i mean chelsea started as chelsea brandy right and chelsea also had some um let's say we talked about this i don't know if i can share this so openly uh, in an interview but we we had some uh talks about how it can be confusing to be uh, a drag queen in the beginning if you're out of drag really strongly identifying as male and mm-hmm. then are getting confused like am i am i maybe trans or do i want to be a woman or do i just like to be on stage or especially in the beginning if you're not comfortable on the stage yet or not really comfortable in showing yourself in in full shenanigans, then you're like, why am I doing it? Because yeah. I want, I do it because I like it. But then when I'm out, I still am uncomfortable. And it's like, it's a bit confusing in the beginning. And then, I mean, this is not only Chelsea or this is also me, but mm-hmm. um, let's say Chelsea created this alter ego Chelsea boy on a 
experience of being Chelsea Brandy. So it's really yeah. like listening to what you want and to shape that in a way. And of course, Chelsea Boy is now, uh, let's say, representing transformative identity. And for me, Mama Queen is a fixed identity. Mm. Mm. Okay. And I think Chelsea, Chelsea is really like, can be anything. And Mama Queen is really, Mama Queen is of course mm-hmm. a mother, a mother yeah. energy. And, and if I want to express, let's say, a dark side, an evil side, uh, uh, then I, I choose to do that under the alias of Lucifer to not, let's say, confuse the two. And like, oh my God, is Mama Queen like a distorted uh, <laughs> creature, evil bitch now? Or like, no. <laughs> Yeah, Mama Queen is like Mama Queen, you know? Yeah. I, I have my own way of dealing with those things. Like, let's say I create a character. Let's say I Madge, I create a character called Cynthia, right? Cynthia doesn't know about Madge. So if somebody mm. tries to say, well, what about Madge to Cynthia? Cynthia's mm-hmm. like, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's the fourth wall. I think you, everybody deals with it differently, I guess. Yeah, so you're yes. more like United States of Terror. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Um. Lastly, I just want to know, uh, I want to keep this interview short enough to keep it on Instagram because they only let you do an yes. hour, speaking of thirst traps. Um, do, you have a, do you have a spiritual practice or something you do to make you, to put you in touch with your artistic vision? Because you are very much in touch with it, it's clear. So what, what do you do? do, you, do well, you it's, it's really interesting because I was a raised uh, a Christian. That's why, of course, I did the Virgin Mary look. Okay. And um, then when I was, I think, about 16, I was like, no, Christianity and going to church and listening to one person say, uh, now we're going to pray and do it, wasn't really working for me. And uh, in a way, I feel like being raised with the knowledge of a belief system in my, let's say, I don't know how to say it. I just transformed God into universal energy. Mm-hmm. and. Um, I thought if if God created humans uh, resembling His own image, then we are basically all gods. So we could oh. be in control of of creating uh, life, day, night, uh, anything. And I really, I think spirituality is something. The more uh, I connect with people that are not like me but are opposites from me, the more I get in tune with my intuition and my mm. spirituality. And I don't really define it by a specific practice so i have friends with different backgrounds and uh i feel like that's my intuition is my spirituality interesting yeah i, I think that's, that's it that's great i think i think um you're a natural leader and your teacher and i am so excited to just see what you what you keep bringing us or giving us and yes and you've Thank so you. much you, you've just You've done so much for so many people, and I just can't say, I can't put it into words better than that. And thank you so much. Can I ask one more thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. (laughs) (laughs) This is really out of left field uh, after the (laughs) after the spirituality uh, question, or maybe not. The prize was a dress, but you make your own. Would you have worn the dress? Um. Well, <laughs> to be honest, let's say, okay, I, I don't want to be too critical, but as a, as a model, because I've had, I have a lot of experience as a model, of course I could rock the, the dress and wear it. And especially like, I mean, I know Envy did a, a cover shoot for Cosmopolitan. She did mm-hmm. a shoot in the dress. I could do that, of course. And um, I think, for example, if, uh, if I'm really honest if if production decides to put like a dress like that as the winning thing, then I'm like, they didn't expect Chelsea Boy to win or oh. Madame Madeline or, you know, because mm. I feel like this dress already says so much about, uh, mm-hmm. about the person that's supposed to wear it, you know? And it's not, yeah. it's not a bad thing necessarily, but if, if they would have said like, because we didn't see the crown and the scepter and everything, if they just said like, there's a dress from 18,000 euros then we would have the excitement not knowing what the dress looked like. Right. But just because it was there from day one, mm-hmm. every day in the workroom and every episode, they repeated it again. And we were like, I mean, the dress became kind of a joke because yeah. it was like <laughs> not, not that impressive, to be honest. I mean, I know Clays can, can make like beautiful garments and not to say anything negative about 
that, but the dress just wasn't that special, especially well, for mm-hmm. drag queens. I mean, there was not. Mm-hmm. I just missed some trip. shoes. I mean, it was nice for a red carpet for for like a movie star or, mm-hmm. and, but not for a drag queen. I mean, if you want to yeah. perform in this dress, then it's like, why is she wearing this shower curtain? I don't know. You can say it. It was a shower <laughs> curtain. Yeah, for me, it was just is. a little bit boring. Yeah. With Glorials, yeah. right, Madge? Goatsies, yeah. Oh, goatsies, well, that was yeah. the most. Inter- that was the most interesting <laughs> part about the whole dress, to be honest. The holes. <laughs> the holes and the chains, yes. <laughs> and I mean, of course, I mean, I have to, I have to say, I mean, I like the shape, the way it stands up on the top, but I mean, the bottom part was boring and it could have been more interesting. That's my mm-hmm. opinion. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, Clay's thought my my Maria outfit I had a cheap fabric. <laughs> and one yeah. point, I mean, we just have a different taste, you know. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a joke, and on on our show too, it's been a running joke. The Yurik, even I know the how to Yurik. say Dutch, yeah. the Yurik. It was <laughs> it's a joke. It's hilarious, and as a pri- as a grand prize, it's hilarious, and it must make it a lot easier to not be the winner because all you miss <laughs> is a stupid shower curtain dress. So, so, well, I have to I have to be honest about it. I think that Jamie JK and Envy were from day one really convinced that they were winning. Mm-hmm. And I was convinced to make it to the finale and I just wanted to show all my outfits. And oh. yeah. that's what I did. And I mean, I think it was episode two or like in, in the beginning. And me and Abby already looked at each other and said to each other, like, girl, we have to make it to the finale together. Just <laughs> we high five on it and we just made it happen. Ah. So, I mean, we really manifested one way or another. I mean, we were yes, in the lip sync together twice and yeah. we both survived twice. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a... Me and Abby got really close because of the being the being the underdogs a little bit, and it okay, was it one was more tiny experience. one more tiny question. Uh, yes, uh, the last lip sync when you did the splits, your did your shoe get stuck because <laughs> of the material? Yes, I knew it. Listen, listen, this whole this whole final lip sync. I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's not a song I listen to, uh, so it was for me. I had to practice that lip sync song, and then. In that outfit, I mean, if I have like more freedom to move, it would be yeah. fine. But this wig, I mean, the wig was impossibly oh, yeah. heavy. I think I had like 200 bobby pins stuck in my in my head. And I just felt like if I jump up and down, the wig is going to drop off. My whole crinoline dress is going to be fucked up. And I, I tried to take the crinoline dress off, but it was stuck underneath the corset. And then I had the big bow and... <laughs> this was not a, this was not a dress to be deconstructed in a runway, mm. uh, and especially not in a lip sync. Uh, <laughs> so I just I just went for it, and uh, I mean, of course, I looked around after 15 seconds, and Abby was basically butt naked on the on the <laughs> yes. catwalk already, and right. I was like, ah, no, and I just had fun with it. I mean, that's yeah. I think that's not really in the edits visible. But of course, everybody could see me struggle, but I didn't feel like it blocked me. I just kept on going and I just had yeah. fun with it. And I was like, yeah, well, if this is going to happen, then because I was kind of hoping, to be honest, for the storyline that they were going to put Abby and Envy in the lip sync. Oh, yeah. As two sisters yeah. right before the finale. That's what I I was like, this is the that's drama that's going to happen, you know? And then I was like, bam, me and Abby again. I was like, yeah. really? Okay, girl, let's be top three together and uh, make it a double save. And we said that to each other before the lip sync. Really? I'm super happy that, yeah. We had fingers crossed and we were like, oh, please, please, please. Because we, 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 we high fives on let's make it to the finale together. And it would be fucked yeah. up if one of us would send each other home. So, yeah. Well, good job. We um, made it. You, you did. Yes. You all did great. You're all wonderful. It was great yes. entertainment. And uh, thank you. We just can't wait to see what you what you do in the future. Yes, you we hope to go on tour. Winner, yes. Baby. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much. And uh, stay in touch. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. We yes. really appreciate yes, it. Yes, of course. My pleasure, honey. Okay. Well, we'll All right. You Have later. a wonderful weekend. Okay. You, too. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. That's uh, hot. That's hot. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's our last, maybe our last episode of the season, right? That's it, right? Well, so. yeah. Well, you sent me the Spanish. Oh, my God. Uh, well, thingy. I wasn't saying we should do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, me neither, because I was just, well. Okay. okay. Well, okay. talk to you, Fashion Slurry. It's been lovely. It's been fun it's doing it. It's been lovely. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.